Well, hello fellow fly fishers. And today I'm gonna to tie a wet fly for you. It's one of my favorite patterns, uh, also known as a soft tackle. I'm gonna tie the an orange and partridge. It's a, a an old pattern, it dates back maybe uh, as far back as a couple hundred years. It originated in England, as, uh, at least that's what we know. Um, it's really worked well for me on uh, some waters with very selective fish and mostly dead drift, not swung like a traditional wet fly. Let me just, uh, I will put up my materials list, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna use a uni thread, uh, eight aught and rusty brown for the thread. And then for the body, I'm gonna use a silk floss. It's overlay. It's color 625, which is orange. And I am gonna put a rib in, uh, so I'm gonna use Ultra wire, small copper color. And I'm using for a hook of Fulling Mills FM5085, which is a nymph hook, a 2X long nymph hook, and a size 16. And of course, the soft tackle will be a partridge feather, as I have here. But, all right, let's just get going. Now, I like to start back about two hook eye lengths behind the I the hook and I'm going to tie in to secure the thread I'm going to tie in some small copper wire to the bend of the hook you don't need touching wraps or anything but because uh, the floss was going to act as a body and cover that up. So right about there, I'll bring this back up and tie in a piece of floss. Now floss flattens out nice, gives you a really smooth, um, body and I think this fly to me well I'm pretty sure it was meant to represent a caddis I think and to, either a diving caddis or an emerging caddis I think in really small sizes uh, it could be a mayfly but um, mayfly merger but the couple places I fish where there are a lot of caddis um, it's in both, both are tail waters. This is where this fly has, uh, worked fairly well. Now I will tie it in smaller sizes. I just don't have the fe the partridge feathers to do it. And to be honest with you, it, it is challenging. I'm up here. I'm going to tie this off. I like to kind of twist it and make a little bump here. So the your hackle sticks up, but I just use a couple wraps of this. That helps give it a little bump to go back up again so the hackle will flare out a little. I should have cut a little piece of longer silk. Okay, I think that's about it. I'll tie that off. Get a couple firm wraps ahead and maybe behind. Here we go. All right, so I am gonna counter wrap it with the copper wire. You don't have to. few wraps behind and a couple in front and then I helicopter that off. Okay, now partridge. I don't like to over hackle my wet flies. 
So I'm gonna strip most of this away. And let me check the length of these guys. That's not too shabby. I like it a little shorter, but uh, for demonstration purposes, I think it'll work fine. So I'm gonna brush those fibers back and tie it in here. And then I'll fold those back just to lock them in. Trim those guys away. Okay, now, you notice I tied it in with the, you can see there's a natural curve here. So the curve, the concave uh, portion of the curve is facing the back and then the convex is forward. So I'll just brush those fibers back as I wrap it around. Okay, secure the feather. A couple wraps in front, maybe three. Now what I like to do is fold the whole thing back a little bit, even the quill. I'll cut that off after I've finished, right before. Uh... Okay, there we go, all right, so. I like to saturate the thread with a little bit of head cement and then a four or five uh, turn whip finish and it's not going anywhere. There we go. Cut that guy off. Come back and Kick, take the quill out of there. And there we go. That is the orange and partridge. Okay, thanks for watching this one, and um, I hope to see you next time. Thanks.